a holy desire, a prayer of St. G. There are two parts of truth, the part that is open, this our Savior and our salvation, and the part that is hid and shut up from us. In the great day to come, we will have a high and endless knowledge of you, dear Lord. We have our being in you, where the ground of humanity began, though it were the second Adam, Jesus, not the first. In long retrospect, we will see the cause of all things that you have done causatively, as also your permissive will with cause, which we are unable to see in the lower world. We then will have great calmness, purging the dream temptations to despair. These fully vanish. We did not choose to be an anchorite, stone selled from the world, choosing rather to turn somewhat from the beauty of the world and from its activity. We could see the parts which then brought to us a changeful, perpetual quietude, and to us a passing great joy of you. And in others, seeing their own sin beside ours complicates a thick mist before our eyes such that we cannot see the fairness of you, by cause of which we join to contrition with others, to compassion for the other, and to bring to life a holy desire for you. It is a way in which we can see that the sin of men drives us to you, eventually distresses us. And when we have a dryness of prayer, we absorb this silence to bring a quiet joy of you and the clear sight of God as all-sufficient. And to ourselves say, all is well, all is well, all shall be well. Praise to the holiest in the height, and also in the depth be praise, and also in the silence be praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The soul that participates in you by even meager means cannot be lost in you, but wends into oneness with God, finding there at last itself. There are simple perfections in the world, a beauty of green hills against a clouded sky, an orchard in mornings of May. Thence to remember that when you made us, you loved us, and when we were made, we loved you and are carried to the court of heaven. Here we see you in part, before or while you are seen in the whole, a joyful day and continuing ever. This oneness is by prayer. Its ground is God, all goodness. Its use is to turn our will to your will. Its end is that we should be made one with and like to you, Lord, in all things. Within prayer we see three heavens, seen because they are shown to us in the blessed manhood of the Son of God of two natures. Of the three heavens, none is more, none is less, none is higher, none is lower, but they are even like in bliss. In bliss, seemingly never here on earth, we enter an endless satisfaction, seeing threefold things joy in the pleasure of the Father, bliss the worship of the Son, and for the endless satisfying the Holy Spirit. The Father is pleased, the Son is worshiped, the Spirit satisfied. Think also wisely of the greatness of this word ever, containing a high and full knowing of love, a continuance of our salvation, and manifold joys that follow as we have difficulty to understand the of the passion of Christ. You allowed us to share in your suffering, this the greater thing of all occurrences on earth, for by this you brought us from the endless pains of death, endless pains of hell. When we choose this life as though to be an anchorite, closely shut in from all the world, 
we enter a wearisome formal life, but fantastic in its continual thought and feeling without distraction, bringing us to a dim consciousness of the beyond. This, the inner nature you have given us, and shall we have it? Amen.